invite our Facebook friends in on this part of the service. Dr. Hart's part uh, will be on Facebook later on, and you might be able to hear his explanation of the lesson, and you can listen to it over and over again so that you can get it down, as we used to say, get it down pat. Amen. <laughs> So we welcome all of our Facebook friends and family. We trust that God has been good to you this week. And the fact that you are listening and watching us this morning is a very good indication that he has been good and gracious to you. That you are still here among us and you are still a part of this fellowship. We trust that things are going well with you and your family wherever you are. And now for our word from the Lord today, we ask you to look in the book of Matthew chapter 18. That's Matthew chapter 18. And we want to consider verses 23 through 35. Matthew chapter 18, verses 23 through 35. And it reads as thus. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven liken unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. And uh, he, the fellow, his fellow servant, fell down at his knee feet and besought him and saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. And when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Should it not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you, if ye from your heart Forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Amen. The grass withereth and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. We want to talk this morning about a subject that is um, so dear to the heart of every, should be to every Christian and most certainly dear to the heart of God. And that is the subject of forgiveness. 
forgiveness. If there is anything that we in the body of Christ have uh, difficulty with, and that is forgiveness. Forgiving those that have mistreated us. Forgiving those that have treated us wrong. Forgiving those who have not shown us the proper consideration. Forgiving those who have not lived up to what they should be as a child of God. So we hold on to this um, right that we have for redress. We hold on to the idea that we need to be made whole for the wrong that we have experienced. We need to be made right. We have a legitimate claim against that person who has mistreated us, who has treated us wrong. And God... God wants us to be able to forgive uh, those who have trespassed against us, who have treated us wrong. As a matter of fact, in the model prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and following, he declares that uh, he will not forgive us if we, not, if we fail to forgive those who have trespassed against us. He will not forgive us our trespass. And that is probably a problem that most many of us are dealing with today. That we are suffering because God has withdrawn his hand from us because we have failed to forgive our fellow uh, traveler. And therefore he has not forgiven us, therefore our sins are still on us and we're still suffering from the effects of our sin. And as a result of uh, Peter asking him a question and about this whole subject of forgiveness, Jesus was teaching them the need to learn to forgive. And Peter said, well, Lord, yes, in essence, I, 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 I understand and I agree. But how many times shall I forgive? How many times? Because, you know, some folk we deal with, they just keep on mistreating us. They keep on uh, treating us wrong. They keep on showing disrespect and disregard for us. And how many times should we forgive? Seven times was the suggestion that Peter made. And the Lord said, no, no. Not seven times, but 70 times seven. And in essence, 70 times seven times in the, for the same event in the same day. In other words, an unlimited number of times that we should forgive. And then he told this parable out to demonstrate what he meant by forgiving. And he said that was a, a king. That was uh, who had uh, several servants, several servants, and he had given into them certain amount of money, or loaned them, or provided financing for them. And one day he decided to call them in and to take an account of uh, where they stood with him. So he had all of them brought before him to give an account of how they stood with him. And this one servant owed the king 10,000 talents. Now, now, it's difficult to determine how much that is in our money, but suffice it to say that it was several million dollars. And, and he, the servant told him, he said, Lord, I, I know it's time to pay, but I don't have it. I can't pay. Will you be patient with me? And he fell down at his, the king's feet and made this request of him. And the king had compassion on him and said, Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. Not only am I not going to require you to pay me now, 
I'm not going to require you to pay me ever. I'm going to forgive the debt. I'm going to wipe your slate clean. And the, the, the servant was so happy that he was now debt free. And as he was leaving in his jubilance, he saw a fellow servant who owed him a hundred pence. That's something less than five, about five, six thousand dollars. And he caught him by the throat. He said, listen, pay me what you owe me. And the servant said unto him, oh, I, I cannot pay it now, but have patience with me and I will pay you all. But he wouldn't have patience with him. He took him and threw him into prison. And when he saw others saw him do that and knew what had happened to him just a little bit previously, they went and told the king. And the king called the servant back and said, Hey, 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 hey. I heard that you left here debt free because I'd forgiven the debt and you found somebody that owed you just a small amount of money and I forgave you millions and you wouldn't forgive him. So now I'm going to cancel the forgiveness that I offered to you and I'm going to reinstate the debt and cast you into prison to the tormentors and leave you there until you pay it all. Now, now let's look at this. First of all, let's look at the two debtors. Who were they? The first one that owed the king uh, 10,000 talents, he, he was what we would call a big shot. He, he was not just an ordinary person. You see, you don't get in debt for millions of dollars to put shoes on your feet. You don't get in debt for millions of dollars uh, to put food on the table and clothes on your back and, 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 and a roof over your head. You get in debt for that kind of money because you're a big time operator. You're operating a large enterprise that requires great financing. An enterprise that probably employs hundreds of maybe thousands of people. You are a big industrialist. Your name was probably on some of the buildings in town. You may have even given money for one wing in the hospital. Your name may be on the lot. His name may have been on the library. He was well known and well established, and he was an important figure in that community. He was a big shot. So when the debt was forgiven him, he did not show the proper appreciation for what had happened to him by the forgiving of the debt because subconsciously he probably thought he was entitled to it with all the good that he had done and who he had been and the people he had helped and the folk he had employed during his heyday before the reverses came that fixed him so he could not pay he felt he was entitled to it and you know it's hard for a person to be thankful and grateful for what you do for them if they feel like they're already entitled to it. It's hard for them to have the kind of countenance and the kind of humbleness of spirit to be able to truly be grateful and feel that thankfulness for the financial relief that they have received when they feel like that they were entitled to it. So, and, then, and then, then the king forgave him. You know, it's because they were probably peers. The king had probably depended on him to make weapons for him. The king had probably depended on him for other things of a financial nature, to oversee projects for him. So they knew one another. The king was used to him, and he felt that because of all of our relationships, I will forgive the debt. On the other hand, the other servant who owed the uh, 100 pence, something around $5,000 or less, that's something any of us could owe our credit card, vice versa. He was an ordinary person. 
He was not a big shot. He was not a peer to the servant who was forgiven for the 10,000 talents. He did not walk in those circles with the king and people like this first servant. His name was not on any buildings. He had not given money uh, to buy books for the library. He was busy trying to keep food on the table, clothes on the back of his family, and, uh, and, and things of this nature, taking care of the basic fundamentals of life. He was just an ordinary person. And the problem is, those who walk in the high circles have problems identifying with the common person. They don't understand their needs. They don't understand them. So when the man of low estate said, forgive me and have patience with me and I'll pay thee all, the person who could not have empathy for him could not have feelings for him, would not listen to him, and threw him in prison. And, uh, and uh, that happens today. There are many of those in positions of power who have not the ability to understand those of us who are ordinary people, those of us who are struggling to make ends meet. Just in our government the other day, a tax cut was given to give millions of dollars in tax relief to the rich. And then when the pandemic came, they gave $600 to the ordinary folk, and they're talking about we ain't going to get it. It's hard for those who are in high places understand the plight of those who are of low estate. But God is concerned about those who are of low estate, and he told them, the king told the man that he had empathy with, who was his peer, who was in his circle of friends. He said, since you did not show uh, empathy, since you did not show compassion for the man who owed you that little bit of money, I am going to take back my forgiveness of debt and going to make you pay it all that you owe me and put him into the tormentors until he had paid all. So what is the moral of this story? That we need to be able to learn how to have empathy with those that we feel are less fortunate than we are. Oh yes, we pray for them. We say, Lord, we pray for those who are less fortunate than I. But we need to do all we can to walk in their shoes, to understand their circumstances, to be willing to give them a helping hand. Because they are amount of debt may not be as great as yours, but for them, it's a great burden. So be able to show empathy to them. Forgive them as you have been forgiven. Now, a word about this. Forgiveness uh, means that you've been mistreated, that you have been treated wrong, and because of that, you feel you have a just claim for redress, a ju just claim to be made whole against the person who treated you wrong. And yes, you may have that. And if they do not do something to indicate to you that they are sorry for what they have done, as these servants both did, we tend not to forgive them and we hold grudges and we hold resentment for the person. And Jesus said, don't do that because when you hold resentment for the person, it kills and damages your witness. It kills and damages your peace. It causes you to have high blood pressure and stress. It causes you to have health problems. And it breaks your fellowship with God. Because God said, and we all sin and come short of the glory of God, He said, I won't forgive you if you don't forgive them. So it is important that we forgive. We must forgive. Not only to be pleasing to God, but we must forgive in order that we might have a reasonable life ourselves. So let me give you a suggestion that I have about this forgiving. 
the reason you need to forgive is because somebody's done something to you that's displeasing and you're holding that against them. Well, what I say is release it. Don't hold it against them. As the Bible says in some version in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, is that love keeps no record of wrong. When they treat you wrong, don't hold it against them. Let it be like pouring water on a duck's back. It just slides right off. You never keep a record of it. You don't even remember it because it's not that important to you. And you don't need to, quote, forgive them because you have already, you never held it against them. That's kind of like Jesus on the cross. When Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He never said that he forgave them. And the reason he never said that he forgave them is because he never held it against them. And if we ever learn not to hold things against people or what they have done for us, our lives will be better. Our relationship with God will be better. We'll be able to treat those people better. Now, on the other hand, the person who has treated you wrong, and in this case, owed money, I have a suggestion for you. If you owe somebody money, and you have a schedule of payments to make to them, if you're not going to be able to make the payment, you are the first one to know it. You will know it before the payment time comes. My suggestion to you is, go to the person you owe before the payment comes due and tell them that I'm not going to be able to make the payment and for whatever reason and ask for a renegotiation of the terms or delay of the payment or less than full payment. Go to the person, explain the circumstances and you will find that person will be more than willing to work with you to resolve the situation. But if you know you're going to miss the payment but you don't go to them and they have to wait and they discover you're 30 days or 60 days behind and they have to now use time and energy to call you and rook you up and run you down for the payment. When all of that, they have incurred additional expenses and then they will be less inclined to go along with you than they would have if you had gone to them in the first place. I found out in my experiences that when you cannot meet your obligation, go to the person before it's due. You know you're not going to be able to make the payment. You don't have to uh, stop, go hide and stuff like that. Face them. You faced them when you wanted the money. So face them now when you cannot pay. And you will find they will be gracious and more than willing to go and be uh cooperative with you in resolving the situation. So in order for us to have the kind of life that God would want us to have and to be the kind of witness God needs us to witness, when God forgives us, as the king did the first servant, we should be willing to forgive those who have treated us wrong, not because they deserve it, but because you have been forgiven. Someone has been gracious to you. And you're willing to pass that on. You're willing to pay it forward. You're willing to show kindness to someone else. And if you cannot forgive all of the debt, you can reschedule it so they can make payments less than what they promised to pay. You can work something out with them so that the debt could be solved. That way you're able to keep your relationship with them and keep your fellowship with God, and life will be so much better for all of you. But if you wholly forgive me, do not forgive. It can do great damage to you. It has been suggested that those who are in the mental institutions, if they could just forgive uh, those who have done wrong to them, the majority of them could be released tomorrow. They would be cured of their 
problem if they just forgave those who treated them wrong. But if you hold on to it, it does not benefit you to hold on to it. It only harms you. And it only harms your relationship with your fellow man. And it breaks your fellowship with God. So, sisters and brothers, the Lord wants us to know that we need to forgive. And how often should we forgive? Forgive every time there is an offense because that's what God does for you. Especially when they come to you and ask. But they don't have to come and ask. Forgive them without them coming to you. It's kind of like when our son John will come and he do some stuff he know he shouldn't do. And you come back, he's faithful in doing this, come back and say, Daddy, will you forgive me? And I say, John, I don't need to forgive you. He said, uh, yes, Daddy, but will you forgive me? I said, but I don't need to forgive you. He said, why, Daddy? I said, because I never held it against you. I never let it interfere with our relationship. I never let it interfere with the judgments of our things that I would do or not do for you. I never let it play a part in the life. And I don't keep a record of the wrong. I don't remember what he did yesterday and last week and last time. I let that be water over the bridge so that our relationship can be what it ought to be and that my relationship with God can be what it ought to be. So sisters and brothers, learn how not to hold on to things that have been done to you that were wrong. Learn how to let it go. No matter how much you want to retaliate, no matter how much you want to extract justice, let it go. Just release it. You don't have to have a redress of wrong in order for you to be what God would have you to be. You don't have to have the satisfaction knowing that I got even with you. What does that mean anyway? It's just a temporary feeling. So learn how to just let it go and keep no record of it in your memory. I've had some people come to me and say, Reverend, you know, I won't apologize. I say, for what? For something I did, I say, what's that? They say, oh, I say, oh man, I didn't even remember that. <laughs> I didn't hold that. I can't burden my spirit with that kind of stuff. I never held it against you. I never kept a record of it. I never let it interfere with our relationship. And certainly I didn't want it to cause, be the cause of an interference with my relationship with God. So if I could impress upon you today that God wants us to forgive one another. So much so that he says, if you do not forgive them of their wrong or trespass towards you, I will not forgive you of the wrong that you have done against me. Amen. This is God's message for us today. We pray that we find a resting place in your heart and that we will learn to grapple with this most serious condition that faces the church today. And that's the inability to forgive. There are people holding grudges against folk for stuff they have done years ago. Folk have forgot about it. Folk didn't even know they had done it. We are going around holding grudges and causing uh, an interference in relationship with them and affecting our relationship with God. So I pray, Father, that he will teach us how to just let it go. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this marvelous day that you've given us. A day that will be fraught with all kinds of problems and all kinds of opportunity for the devil to come in and interfere with the relationship between our, us and our fellow man and certainly our relationship with you. Help us not to let this problem of unforgiveness 
cause us to not have the kind of relationship and fellowship we need to have with our fellow man, especially in times like this. And certainly that we will not be able to lose our fellowship with you. We pray a blessing upon all those who hear us now. In your name and in your name, we speak blessings into their lives. It is in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, that we ask it all. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to be with you today. We trust that this word has found a hiding place in your heart and will help you to not to be able to sin against God or your fellow man as we make our journey from earth to glory. If you would like to worship and giving through this ministry, not to this ministry, but through this ministry, because your giving should always be to God, and it should be based upon your fellowship and relationship with God, and it should be based upon uh, your how you view God and how grateful you are to Him for what He has been to you and what He is to you now. And if you want to do that through this ministry, you can do that. There is an app for giving called Giblify. And uh, you can download it from the Play Store or download it from wherever you get your apps from. And then you can log into it and look for the Corinth Missionary Baptist Church at 2774 County Road 236 in Tyler, Texas. And you can make your uh, gift through that medium. Or if you want to, you can mail it in to the Corinth Missionary Baptist Church, uh, 2774 County Road 236, Tyler, Texas, 75705. And we will receive them, those gifts for you and uh, give proper recognition and account for it. And if you do it this way, then God will give you credit for it on the heavenly book. You're not giving to this ministry. You're giving to God through this ministry. Not based on the needs of this ministry because God's going to supply all of what we need to do what he wants us to do. But uh, you giving to maintain your relationship based on your relationship and your fellowship with God. God bless and God keep you shall be, be our prayer.